Okay, this video is going to focus on uh, basically two kinds of chemical formulas. Uh, first is the molecular formula, and this is the most common type of chemical formula there is, and almost anybody who's ever done anything about chemistry is familiar with it. Um, the other type of formula is what we call an empirical formula. All right, and the empirical formula is a little bit more unusual, if you will, or at least unless you're studying chemistry, you're probably not exposed to this. All right, and um, to start out with, I just want to point out that the word empirical um, implies that this is a chemical formula that has arisen um, because of observation, because of observation or based on experiment, right? Based on experiment or observation. All right, now, uh, to start, um, what I want to do is give you some examples of some molecular uh, formulas. So, um, the first is glucose. C6H12O6. And you can see from the formula that there's basically two kinds of information you get from a molecular formula. Um, you learn which elements are part of the compound and how many of each element actually um, appear in the compound. So we get two pieces of information. We get the numbers of atoms of total atoms, and two, uh, we know the identity. And that's the information we get from a molecular formula. From an empirical formula, it's a little bit different. What we get from this is, the empirical formula describes the lowest whole number whole number ratio of the atoms in the compound and I'll go into a little bit more detail about what that means in a minute I want to come back over here first, though, and um, introduce some other um, molecular formulas. So this one, like I said, is glucose. I'm just going to give it a label here. All right, and the next one down is acetic acid, all right, or more commonly, uh, laypersons would know this as vinegar. All right, and um, another type of molecular formula would be this molecule, which is actually called benzene. Now, all three of these formulas are what we call covalent compounds. And um, they're called covalent compounds because they're uh, composed entirely of nonmetals. Um, this would be in contrast to a compound uh, that looks like this. All right, and this is um, sodium carbonate. This is an ionic compound. It's called an ionic compound because it's composed of a metal, that would be the sodium, and then nonmetals. So coming back up to the top three compounds, these, are, these guys are, are called covalent compounds or molecular compounds because they're, they're composed entirely of nonmetals. Right? So there's, there, there's different kinds of compounds in the world, um, and uh, we're going to tonight mainly be focusing on the covalent compounds. All right, now, what exactly is an empirical formula? We see from the molecular formulas that we, we get, again, to reiterate, two main pieces of information. We, 
we, un we can understand how many of a certain type of element are present in the compound and we can know which elements are in, are in a compound. So for glucose, we know that there's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we know the ratio is 6 to 12 to 6. In acetic acid, we know that this one, like glucose, is also composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but the ratio of atoms in, in the actual compound is 2 to 4 to 2. And then benzene contains only carbon and hydrogen, and the ratio is 6 to 6, 6 carbons and 6 hydrogens. So how is an empirical formula different? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the glucose over near this other category and re rewrite it. So we have C6H12O6. Now, what you'll notice is that the subscripts in, in, in each of the three cases are divisible by other numbers. Like, for example, we could divide the 6, the 12, and the 6 by 2. We could divide it by 3. We could, we could even divide it by 4, but we'd, we'd end up with fractions. The main thing to see is that we could choose to divide it by 6. And if we do that, something interesting happens because the formula is reduced to this, where now the formula is in its lowest whole number ratio. So there's a, now there's only one carbon, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. This is the empirical formula of glucose, which I'm going to abbreviate EF. Right? So what we did to get this was we divided the subscripts of the actual chemical compound by the largest whole number we could find that would reduce the subscripts of that compound to their lowest whole number ratio. This ratio represents the ratio in which these atoms appear in this compound and is identical to the ratio we find in the actual chemical compound. In other words, if you compare the carbon in glucose to the hydrogens, you see that the ratio is 6 to 12, which is the same as saying that the carbon is present in a ratio of 1 to 2. And when you look at the empirical formula, you see indeed that the ratio is 1 to 2. The ratio is 1 to 2 to, to 1 when we bring in the oxygen. Okay. Similarly, if we if we look at the acetic acid, so I'm going to redraw that here, the C2H4O2, that this compound um, can be divided by two. The subscripts can be di um, div divided by two, and when we do that, we end up with the empirical formula for acetic acid, and Remarkably, the empirical formula for acetic acid is identical to glucose. All right, so there's, a, there's two things, two facts that we can draw from this that may not be entirely obvious. The first is that different covalent compounds can have the same empirical formulas, which I'm abbreviating um, EF. All right, and the second thing is, is that when you inspect the uh, chemical formula for glucose and for acetic acid, and for this third molecule I actually haven't done yet, which is benzene, what you're going to see is that the molecular formulas do not equal the empirical formula. All right, I'm going to abbreviate molecular formula as MF. All right, so the second fact we can draw from this is that um, for covalent compounds, the MF 
does not equal the EF. So the, the empirical formula is going to be something that you're going to have to find. All right, and I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that in other videos, not in this one. Um, but, but in a video that follows this one, we'll, we'll look at that problem. For now, what I want to do is come back to the issue of the benzene. All right, so this molecule you see is, uh, this is distinct from the glucose or the acetic acid. So I'm going to rewrite it here, C6, H6, H6. And you can see this one's different. When we go to divide it, our divisional is going to be 6 like it was with glucose. But the empirical formula, the EF, will be CH. So it has a unique empirical formula by comparison uh, uh, to the glucose. Okay, so the, the take-home message uh, to this short lesson is that a molecular formula tells you the numbers and types of atoms that you find in a chemical compound. By contrast, the empirical formula tells you the, literally the lowest whole number ratio in which those elements appear in the chemical formula. The empirical formula is useful to chemists because basically when we try to characterize some kind of um, compound that we don't know the identity of, most of the time the first thing that we're going to learn about or the first thing that we're going to find is going to be the empirical formula. And once we have the empirical formula, it makes it possible to work backwards to find the chemical formula. So the concept of empirical formula is really important to chemists.